my name is Marika and I'm a second year physics PhD student at the University of Cambridge and in today's video I'll be going through some advice for first year PhD students and anything else that I wish I had known before starting a PhD. I actually tried to uh, film this video back in November but it just became a bit too long-winded so hopefully in this video it'll be succinct and to the point. I also tried to film a first year review, but that didn't really go anywhere. So if anyone wants to hear my experiences as a PhD starter during the pandemic, please leave a comment down below. Just before starting, I just want to make it very clear that these advice are based solely on my experiences only. And so please take it as a grain of salt know that your experiences are totally valid, especially since you will probably be starting or experiencing your PhD in a completely different environment, especially if we count in COVID, um, research and everything else such as well-being. So just keep that in mind and yeah, enjoy the video. So the first advice will be research and allow yourself to settle into a new environment. I would say a lot of people move locations when they are starting a PhD and whether that's halfway across the world like I have or a few hours drive away, no matter what, moving and starting a new chapter of your life can get very exhausting. And so you'll need a lot of time to settle in. I don't think this is highlighted or mentioned in other resources as heavily, but since you'll be starting your PhD and living in that location for the next, say, three to six years, depending on your location of your PhD, I personally think that this is a huge aspect of making sure that you have a balanced well-being. So take your time at the start of your PhD to settle and adapt as you don't want to be doing that once everything starts to get busy and you're trying to fumble around to balance your PhD as well as trying to adapt to your new environment. Use this start of your PhD to explore the new city or the new country that you're in. And also importantly, research the cultural norms and also etiquettes as this can be very important when it comes to research and teamwork and any other information that may ease you into settling in. For example, coming from Australia, the lack of sun really, really affected my mood and later on discovered that the NHS, which is the healthcare provider, recommends every single citizen in the UK to take vitamin D supplements during the autumn and winter. So as you can tell, these were some of the adjustments that I made to my daily life so that I can uh, adapt to my new environment. The second tip is to get to know who is who in the group. Obviously this depends on how big your group is, but it's a nice way to navigate your group and get to know how the group works from an early stage of your PhD, as it can be crucial for the rest of your degree. If you have a problem, that question could be answered in merely a conversation if you know who to talk to. But if you don't, it may take you a ridiculous amount of time. These questions could be from printing and figuring out how, how all the IT works, to setting up a simulation, to getting access to particular equipments. This also allows you to widen your network and not feel isolated in your PhD, as a lot of people do have those feelings. And it's all right, but it makes it much easier if you have that network. If your group doesn't have any other first year members, I highly, highly recommend that you seek out for and create a support group of other first year members, whether that's within your department, your community or your college. This way, you'll feel part of a community and know that you'll all be in this together as PhD is not an easy thing to do. And also know that these other first year members 
will be there for the rest of your degree and will be the one sticking around. And so it's actually not a bad idea to invest some time at the start of your degree and get to know who they are as they will become very familiar faces. So the third tip is understanding your work style. A lot of supervisors and mentors may state that the number of hours you put into your PhD is directly correlated to your success. And of course, you will need to put in the effort for you to succeed, but it's not all about the hours. It's more about knowing yourself and your limits and understanding how you work best and how efficiently you can work. A silver lining of the pandemic is being able to experience remote work. And if you know you work best at home when it comes to reading papers and analyzing results, then do that. There's no point for you to go into the office and get distracted. And same goes for if you're a morning person, then do those experiments in the morning. And if you're a nighttime person, then you can do those analysis in, you know, during your nighttime. There's no right or wrong way of doing a PhD when it comes to trying to figure out when you want to work. So that's something that you really need to figure out yourself. Another point is figuring out your relationship between your supervisor and the first few months of your PhD. You need to figure out whether you want relationship to be more hands-on or hands-off and figure out what their supervising style is. And you might need to adapt and compromise certain aspects, but you need to figure this out as you'll be you know, working with your supervisor for the next few years and figure out what you envision your relationship between you and your, your supervisor could look like in say a year or two years time. The fourth point is to find a routine. A very good perk of the PhD is that you get tons of freedom and flexibility. The easiest way to put it is that you are your own boss and so you need to figure out what's best for you. I personally think it's the easiest if you treat your PhD as a job, although I've never had a full-time job but that's what I think it is. And some institutions might have a guideline that you have to work say 40 hours a week but understand that those 40 hours includes admin and doing email, cleaning the lab, trying to find resources, and also having you know meaningful conversations with your colleagues over coffee. It definitely, definitely does not mean if you're doing a experimental PhD, 40 hours of straight up experimental work, it includes everything else other than that. This advice also ties in doing extracurricular activities outside your PhD, exploring the city as I mentioned before, networking with other people and also exercising. PhD should definitely not take over your whole entire life. For example, I personally do not work on the weekends and I try to not work as much as possible on the weeknights. is be detailed and take the time to write daily summaries. So this advice may be catered more towards STEM students, but I think it'll be useful for other fields as well. For those who did the STEM undergrads, I'm sure you remember the dreaded logbooks after every single experiment that you have to do and you have to submit and you might get marked down for a very, very tiny detail that you missed. And as a PhD student, I understand the importance of making sure to write down every single detail of that particular experiment or that particular procedure that you followed. Especially important when you want to go back to figure out what you did that particular day or when say your supervisor asks you, how did you, you know, perform this? What was the concentration? How much volume did you use? What kind of laser power did you use? Those kind of variables can be very, very important. I think something that 
most people need to remember when they're doing a PhD is that your results from a particular experiment on a particular day needs to be reproducible on another day, a year's, you know, a year along the timeline. Doesn't matter if you get this novel, novel, you know, pick somewhere or a really good experimental results. If you can't reproduce that, then you're not going to be able to do good science. But if you make sure you write down summaries or just make sure you write down what you do every step of the day, then you won't have that problem because you always know that if you go back to that day, you'll be able to have a record of what you did it will be beneficial in the long run and it's also a really good incentive to feel accomplished and also reflect upon that day as i think as a phd student there are a lot of days where you feel like you are unproductive and you couldn't get this to work but at least if you say you found a good paper and wrote that down then you have done something you have worked on something and so it's a good way to end your day positively and and keep a record of it the sixth advice is to embrace the unknown i think this is the core part of a phd and this is something that has taken me a while to come to terms with i am the kind of person who loves to know answers but phd just does not work like that you are on your own trying to find something very new and you're trying to become an expert in that. Obviously there you're, there's your supervisor and your group members to guide you and help you out. But if an answer to your research question is already out there and it already exists, then why bother researching it? Uh, most of the time you don't even know where to start and it can feel very overwhelming and I think that it's the mean part of research but we just have to face it. You, you definitely need to have a positive outlook and know that you're usually stuck because you're the first person in the world to wrangle this particular topic or to pick a particular issue and you're there at the forefront of that field and you are on your way to discover something very novel during your PhD. I know it sounds cliche, but it is true. It's also okay to feel completely lost and not know what you're doing. There's a lot of new things that are happening in your life and so don't be afraid to reach out for help. Everyone in your group, your postdoc, your PhD, um, your other PhD students, your supervisors have all gone through it, so they definitely understand what's going on. I think finally you need to understand and accept and commend yourself for embarking on this challenge and feel excited as by the end of your degree, you will become that expert in your field and become a doctor in the end. How cool is that? The final and seventh advice is to be kind to yourself. I think I personally picked this up due to COVID, thank you COVID, um, but doing a PhD is a mean feat. PhD is not something that's meant to be easy, it's meant to be challenging. And also include moving to a different country, everything else, it is a bit of a struggle. And so if something doesn't work one afternoon, that's all good. If it doesn't work for say two weeks, that's all good. You're working on a project a few months at a time. And I know that when you're stuck, it does not feel good at all, but it's those moments where you, that allow you to overcome those challenges and you can become and grow as a better person and also as a researcher. And if you also make a mistake, you can learn from those mistakes and you can grow to become a better researcher at the end of the day. So make sure to be kind to yourself and also understand yourself. And thanks also for getting this far into the video. But whoever you are, I hope you have a lovely PhD journey. Thank you so much for watching this video. And I hope you've picked up one or two 
or a few advice on the way for those of you who've just started or maybe you'll be starting your PhD soon. Be sure to leave a comment down below and watch out for my new videos. Bye!